Watford are turning the game again on its head. Back comes Kevin Moran, and he's uh, dragged down by John Conlon. And the uh, linesman on the far side has been flagging. Moran's protesting. Thought he was going to get a free for that. Don't necessarily blame him either. Ends up being a, a line ball instead. Now only four and a half minutes are remaining at Semple Stadium. First round of the Monster Hurling Championship. Beginning what we hope will be a very good hurling summer. Colin Ryan, this time in no hurry. The referee's having a word or two with uh, Kevin Moran. Just out of camera shot. And in the end, Colin Ryan will hit it. Makes a good connection. We're expecting a fair bit of the other support players to come and try and get to the ball. John Conlon did all his scoring early on. Players calling for it. He sweeps it way back across over there towards Colin Galvin. Galvin right on the end line. Or the sideline rather. Galvin in. They look for it, doesn't come to them. Gavin O'Brien waits, watches. Michael Walsh plays it out, out as far as Jake Dillon, who's deep in midfield at this stage. Two men in the inside forward line, two big men. Beats them all, however. Park Kelly gets there, pressure on by Morris Shanahan. Out there towards and well held by Pat O'Connor, did well. Out towards Bogner, now centre half back. In there to David McInerney, student in Dublin, young student teacher. Pat O'Connor now looking to open up the shoulders, have a go to strike. But he puts it wide after all of that. Well, he's uh, had a good match, a solid game. Another change about to be made. And number 22 is Fergal Lynch. And Peter Duggan, who was himself a sub, is the one coming off. So just a few minutes left. Fergal Lynch, can he just solidify things now and make sure that Clare, who waited a long time for a Munster Championship match win, can earn that? Only a few minutes to go. It's looked likely during the second half, from the very beginning of the half. Don Donovan, huge one down, towards Conor McGrath, breaks away from him. In came Fergal Lynch, couldn't get to it. That was Noel Connor who's trying to get it out, helped out here by Jamie Nagel, who's been excellent. Strikes it long downfield. Morris Shanahan was trying to hold on to it. In fact, it's not Morris. And it's away eventually. Close to the sideline. Line ball to Waterford. They're in a bit of a hurry now. Two minutes to go. Behind by 216 to 115. And this time it's uh, Waterford's turn to play it short to the goalkeeper. Pressure applied by Padge Collins. Ian O'Regan. Not such a good clearance. Seized on by Colin Ryan. And uh, Colin Ryan's shot has gone wide, but at this stage it doesn't really, really matter because it's an eighth wide, but they hold on to their four-point advantage and the seconds tick away. Yeah, I think it's all about the win now at this stage for Clare. The performance won't really matter. I think, it's, as you said, to get over the line to make that breakthrough with this team to win a Munster Championship game. And I think, you know, they won't be too worried that really the game has been poor. There's been a lot of, a lot of poor wides. You know, a lot of, I think, tipping and tapping, very little first-time hurling, and um, you know, I just think this Clare team would be so be much better if they could move that ball quicker. Here's the lively Patch Collins, the 21-year-old, down as far as Derek Honan, slipping it in here. Fergal Lynch is in in the last couple of minutes, and he very wisely puts it over the bar, didn't attempt to get a goal. The most important thing was to put it over, knock the ball out of play, use a couple of seconds, and once again put five points between the teams. Yeah, Fergal Lynch, very experienced uh, campaigner, and... A little bit surprised he wasn't on earlier, actually, in the game. He's a very good hurler, but a uh, nice score there. From this puck out. It's caught beautifully by Brendan Bugler. There'll be two minutes of added time at the end of all of this as Colm Galvin tries his luck. And he's got a beautiful point. Nicely done by the 20-year-old from Clon Lara, playing in just his third championship match. Look at the distance out, but confidence supreme. And 2.18 now to 1.5. 15. Yeah, a huge score with Brendan Bugler again, I think, who's just been outstanding in the second half. And Colin Galvin's had a very, very good game for such a young player in the middle of the field. Great athlete and a super scorer off his left side. Well, everybody's running strongly now for Clare and they're covering the ground and they're getting that little possession that was eluding them in the first half. So as the uh, attendants here are informed of the amount of added time, we're into stoppage time at this stage and now it's just a matter of seconds before Clare can celebrate. And they've had to wait several years for a monster championship win 
and under Davy Fitzgerald, they look like they're going to well and truly achieve it. Tony Kelly puts it away to the left-hand side. Didn't look likely at half-time, but then we were mentioning they are a very, very good second-half side. Yeah, very good. Well, they're, they're fit and they're mobile and young, but I think just, you know, they just started to play more off the cuff and they're relaxed and Waterford, in fairness, stopped hurling. They didn't, you know, didn't get a score from play for ages in the second half and there's Bugler again. What a second half he's what had. What a second half, absolutely exactly. incredible. Quiet in the first half, but shown in the second half why he was an all-star last year. John Conlon. Uh, John Conlon was uh, fouled by Shane O'Sullivan. Uh, league. Once at Porky Arena in the Regulation League, then in the Relegation League, but they also met in the Waterford Crystal. Cork had a, a victory in that back in January. So this is Colin Ryan, and that is brilliantly over. The record books will show him the score of seven points, all of them from freeze, and a very good day's work for them. So 2.19 to 1.15. It's a seven-point victory at this stage. Pat Donnellan, back to Bugler. He's been absolutely terrific. A giant out there in that half-back line in the second half. McGrath's got after this one, wanted to keep it in play. They're all anxious for more scores. And Waterford are looking a well-beaten side. Michael Welch, one of the great heroes over the last decade for Waterford, but there was nothing for them in this second half here. Totally outplayed. And Waterford have been able to look at, and had to look at Clare, who looked classy. And Colm Galvin strikes again with accuracy and poise and he's got a second now in the last five minutes he's become more and more assertive yeah well there are two scores from over 70 meters one with his left side and one with his right side great score there again and you know Claire well worth her victory i think that's the last score of the game and Claire ended up winning by eight points you know having yeah. been four down at half time so there can be no argument by far the better team and took over completely in the second half david fitzgerald has mastered and eight the full-time score here at Semple Stadium, it's Clare two goals and 20 points, Waterford one goal and 15. Been a very good first half, I was really happy with the first half performance, despite the fact that we missed a few chances, we missed a few frees. We were in a very strong position at half-time, but I think the winning and losing of this game was in the seven or eight minutes after half-time, we had four good chances, it didn't take any of them. We could have gone six or seven points up, and fairness to Clare, you know, they fought their way back into the game. They got a couple of points in a row, and then they were on a roll. They got a goal and they were going to be very difficult to catch after that. But I think when we look back on it, we regret the first few minutes of the second half. We're happy with the victory today, but we still realise there's a lot of work to be done. Like you, you've Cork waiting in the long grass for us, and I'd have awful respect for the way they play. It's going to be a ding dong battle again, so it is, but one we're looking forward to. And there you see the Clare will now play Cork on the 23rd of June in the second of the Munster semi finals. Next week, Limerick take on Tipperary in the other semi-final. Right, what did our panel make of the game? Donlan, eight-point margin. It was a vitally important win for Clare. Was it an accurate reflection on the game? Well, I suppose you couldn't quibble with the... You know, Clare got three or four easy points at the end. I think Waterford would have spent four at that stage. But um, you'd have to say that it was kind of a game of two halves, really. Um, um, there's, uh, you know, some very good passages of play and then some me mediocre I suppose you know but you get that in the first round of the championships because the pace between the, the, the league and the first round of the championship right you know it takes a bit of getting used to and I think that Clare will be a lot better the next time for the game t today okay. definitely. Well let's look at some of those elements then Eddie. you've been looking at the positives for Clare. Yeah I suppose uh, it's a bit like the political statement a few years ago they have a lot done more to do so um, all in all I think David would be happy enough you know um, here's Colin uh, Colin Ryan starting it off with a, with a very good point. He started really fast again. And the next clip is just Derek, Derek Honan, who, I suppose, on very limited possession today, converted Anton that came near him. He won a free as well. He got three points in the end. Um, they were direct enough at times, but this was... You could see the target of brick a little bit today. They got in around... This borderline, I suppose, for free is there, but some days you'd get them, some days you don't. And Clare got a few of them today. Um, you know, any time Brick got it, they kind of suffocated him. But their tackling in general today was very, very good at times. Um, you know, there was always two or three of them coming looking for work. And that was um, Colin Ryan, their free taker, who, mm. you know, had done a lot of work apart from the frees. Um, I suppose they mixed him up there with John Conlon for the first point. But to be fair to him, um, at stages, they, they really grafted hard. Um, again, look, I suppose it's, it's borderline for fouls. But... Um, this is where, you know, Brick Walsh doesn't want to be, is out there and chasing after a fella. And this is where John Conlon, you know, uses one of his key strengths, which is his fitness and his pace, mm. taking on Waterford. And they've done that at several times during the day. And here's uh, Tony Kelly with probably the score of the match. You know, on his own half-back line, picked up the ball, goes past Brick, 
Kevin Moran has to scamper across to try to cover him. Just checks inside to lose the, the hook, and that's it's a superb yeah. finish. Yeah, I mean, yeah. without a doubt, it was probably one of the, the entrance fee alone was worth coming into. But mm. um, I suppose it, there was a lot of positives with Clare today. Um, they, f they came out in the second half and they hit 2.12. Okay, well, to continue with your team then of the Fianna Fáil or Dash of 2005, <laughs> lot done more to do. Where, where are the areas for them to improve on? Them? Well, when, when, you, when you look today, there's the obvious one sticking out, the first half particularly, was the puck out strategy because they, they lost, um, you know, they, they only won it in about 30%. And that's one from Patrick Kelly looking for a short one there and it was intercepted by Kevin Moran straight back in, in, in over the bar. And uh, they suffered the same thing in, in a lot of the league matches, right? And this one, this is a, this is a you know, a strategy they've used in the league, short puck out. Mm. The ball should come back then to Colin Ryan, but, you know, there was poor execution. Went wrong two or three times. Yeah, two or three times yeah. was poor execution. And Colin Galvin, they're getting the ball, runs out to the side, and he said they're coming back in field away from support and just knocks one up the line. Then the Warford get possession. Um, they they fought back in fairness to it, but you'd see. And th this is a this is a hole of really um, Pat Donnan on the ball. Should have given it back to the keeper or Donald Donovan to the left. Should have gone back five or ten yards and made the angle. But the bugger was poor. You know, it was poor enough defence in a way. It was opportunism from you know 15 wide as well, and they look at miss freeze, few missed opportunities for scores. Like, you know, they'll feel like that. You know, we could have been a lot closer. All right then, it's time to name our man of the match from this afternoon, and Donal is going to give us the nominees. Well, we picked um, Jamie Nagel first from from Waterford. He was a number one nominee and uh, well deserved. He, I think, he fought very hard, tenaciously all through, and uh, you know was playing against a tight in the second half, if you like, but did, did very, very well. And uh, our second nominee was Colin Ryan. Uh, chipped in with some very, very valuable points for Clare and a uh, high walk rate throughout the, throughout the game. Uh, he was number two and our number three was Brendan Bugler. Um, you know, came to the centre-back, um, half-back line, really drove Clare on in the second half. Stayed in the first half, but he really drove things on in the second half and, um, you know, they were our three nominees. OK, and which of the three got it then, Eddie? Uh, we went with Brent, Brendan Bugler days. Um, as Don said there, you know, very steady in the first half, but particularly in, this, in the second half when Clare kind of really got, got thundered into the match. I suppose to maybe remind you a little bit of Shawnee McMahon back in the day, caught a couple of great balls, thundered out, and was the platform for a lot of the Clare attacks. Okay, well, that's a fair compliment to give to him. Let's hear then from the man from Whitegate. Brendan, congratulations. This really is a hugely important victory for Clare. Yeah, um, of course it is. It's, it's been a while since we won a Munster Championship game. I suppose 2008 was the last time. So, um, you know, this year we wanted to put that right and thank God we did, yeah. A lot of young players, I suppose, this, this win will really mean a huge amount as you go ahead now to face Cork. Yeah, look, at everyone's been talking about the young players we have, like, coming the last couple of years with the minor, the success at minor level in under 21. And uh, yeah, they need time as well, like, you know, um, like we all need time, but um, a couple of them. Uh, showed, showed well today anyway, so we're delighted. Well, Brendan, congratulations. You are the Centre RTE Man of the Match, and Barry Lynch from Centre is here to make the presentation. Thank you very much.